And now on Tucson Business Radio, let's find out how to be healthy, wealthy, and wise with your host, Karen Fisher. Good afternoon and welcome from, well, somewhat cloudy Tucson, Arizona. I am Karen Fisher, your hostess of Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, broadcasting live, but broadcasting remotely on Tucson Business Radio X. I have a very amazing guest with me today and a long-term friend by the name of Patty Gonzalez. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Karen. It is interesting times. We're doing some fun things uh, uh, with technology, and we're quite blessed to be able to have technology. So uh, at least we can do this because we're all doing the appropriate social distancing as we're in the midst of a COVID-19, uh, which I don't even know if that was uh, in anybody's vocabulary 90 days ago, but it certainly is now. So um, thank you again for being here. Thank you again for having me. It is interesting times right now, and everybody's staying home and staying safe. So it's, it's nice to actually get the family together and, and kind of force everybody to be together. So that's nice. A little, yes. a little bit of downtime is great. Yeah, it, 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 it is. But, and, and, and even though, you know, you say downtime, you guys aren't really down. So, we are not. Um, yes. So I do, in, in terms of, so first and foremost, Patty, just a little bit about your background and everything like that. I've known you since you worked at Family Housing Resources. That's when we first met. Yes. And you have been involved with Family Housing Resources and also uh, just in, you know, the community in general. It's now what we're like 20, like close to 25 years. Correct. Yes. And one of the things that has always been near and dear to your heart is well, there's several things, but helping those that need it the most is, is you know, if I could put an emphasis point on that, that is definitely what I've known that you've done. Um, and then very specifically, you have worked, and we'll talk in detail about this, with a specific program called the Mortgage Credit Certificate and and also helping uh, uh, first-time homebuyers, which the definition of a first-time homebuyer is not what most people think it is. But I'm just, I'm super excited to have you. But I want to talk a little bit about you personally, too. So you have and are, as you say, a customer service expert. You've been the coordinator. I mean, you are the go-to person uh, for everybody in town, if you will. And it, it, But your background, you've done both management, consulting. Um, you know, you truly understand the housing markets and truly understand home buyer assistance programs. You also are bilingual, correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. So that is huge within our community. In fact, uh, one of my uh, professional networking organizations, which uh, is BNI, the Copper Connections Chapter, we just uh, inducted our newest member. Things are definitely happening still with the local networking, although we did it virtually this morning. She is a, um, she's a professional translator. That's what she does for businesses, and there's such a huge need for that. But you teach um, – uh, uh, now, are you doing the housing counseling teaching as well these days? I am currently. I'm actually doing them for one of the local nonprofits, and um, that's mainly where I've come in is I enjoy working for the nonprofit community, being able to work with potential home buyers or even homeowners when if we were going through the foreclosure crisis. And then I love that I actually can work with the lenders in the real estate community and as well as title companies. So I've definitely been in home ownership since 1995 and that's always been my love. Well, I, and it, and it shows because you're passionate to what you're doing and just the way that you show up every day is just, is always amazing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well, but uh, behind the scenes, as far as your own family, you have uh, several teenagers, right? I do. I, I actually have three teenagers of my own, and I have a student exchange student here also. So I have oh. one middle schooler and three high schoolers. Oh, boy. Uh, and so now they're doing the official homeschooling stuff on top of everything else? Correct. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how's that going? Because there's a lot of resources available now. It is. It's going well. I, I've been fortunate that um, Community Investment Corporation we're pretty much set up to be able to work from home and they've given me everything I've needed, printers and laptops. And 
so that way my children are able to also do get their work done on their laptops or even on their cell phones these days. So the teachers are definitely stepping up and keeping them busy. And so it's actually going well. It's, it's everybody just kind of stay in your room and we just kind of keep on task and everybody get up, eat breakfast. We just like any other day, you just don't leave this building, our home. Yes. Well, and, and that's, uh, you know, that's what's happening with us. My, our daughter, we have one daughter. Um, and her fiance are both in graduate school at Washington State University. But um, they came in, it was already scheduled for them to come in for spring break. And Washington State University is not in Seattle, which is the hotbed of, you know, there's huge breakouts there, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole state is on lockdown. And um, so Washington State is on the Idaho Washington border. And they just extended their stay. But Allison, um, as part of her her duties in graduate school she teaches class and she's able to teach that um she's able to teach that class remotely which i'm thinking to myself okay it's calculus and she's teaching it remotely that just overwhelms me right. but um but they're everybody's just doing and just doing their part and my poor husband who has actually he has work he would either travel or or be at the house and, um, and he has done that for 25 years. So that part's not different, but having us all there is different for him. Now, we're not in the same room. Like I have, I literally moved everything home on Sunday and we all have our own bubbles and we're all being very respectful all the time, but it's just different that, you know, he's like, it's weird having everybody here. <laughs> so it's been interesting. Yeah. So, for us, it's yeah. the same. It's actually, there's always the, the food on the table. You know, it's like it's right at noon and what's for lunch. So as yeah. long as I keep feeding them, everybody seems to be. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, well, we're we're doing the, you know, just pretend like you're at school or I'm not there. Everybody fends for themselves for lunch. But we do get together for dinner because we always, we would always do that anyhow. So, well, let's talk about, you've got some really juicy things to share with people. And there's a lot of misinformation. And one of the things that I find, and it is, it, it, it is interesting to me because there are resources that are available and the podcast is just another way that we can share with people things that are available. But this is the thing that I know is many people believe that home ownership, especially now, is either impossible or just challenging to the point that it's totally overwhelming and too much to handle. So what, why... You know, what is your guess? Why do you think people believe that? Right now, I think a lot of people are scared because of, are they still going to be employed in a couple of weeks? However, when our interest rates were really good, I was, I was surprised that more people didn't jump on board and start purchasing because it was amazing. I mean, there was a point where I saw something at 0.75, which is unbelievable. So I don't know if, if people, it's just they don't know enough. I've been doing this program since 1995, even housing counseling in general. It's like there's this class available that's going to tell, explain to you everything you need to know. It's free and it's offered once a week. And people just are not, just I don't know if they're just not aware or if the outreach isn't enough. Um, and there's a lot of programs available. So it worries me that it's, all these things are available. People aren't taking advantage of it. Interest rates are creeping up a little bit, but you know, it's like now's a really good time. Although I know we'll talk a little bit about the market. You know, the home prices are up, but I'm not sure exactly what's holding people back. Um, if they're scared of these, you know, with this mortgage payment for 30 years. Um, but throughout all my years, it's, everybody has always said, I got to pay rent anyway, so why not purchase? So that's my, you know, I'm not sure where the communication is being missed. Uh, well, I, part of the, 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 what I just kind of my observation, and by the time somebody gets to me, if you will, they have typically, somebody has said, you don't know unless you try. So that's what happens by the time somebody gets to me as a loan officer. But my suspicion is I think that there is, there's just a lack of awareness. And um, so, and another piece of it is, is that home ownership or getting a loan, I like to tell people that it's a math problem. Specifically, it's an algebra problem. 
And what people don't understand, like like you and I can say, okay, interest rates in the threes, because that's where we are, interest rates in the threes means in the Tucson market right now that you can actually own a home for less than what you're paying in rent for most people. Right. And, and so, and then they say the next thing that comes out of their mouth, it seems that I don't have a down payment. And they don't understand that there are many ways to solve the down payment issue. I know through your uh, the, the company that you work with, which is specifically the Community Investment Corporation of Tucson, you partner with sister agencies and have your own resources to be able to help for down payment assistance. Because I think sometimes it's hard for people. I've, I've noticed it's very hard for people to save up for a down payment. It is. And, and we try to teach them the classes. You know, there's budgeting involved. And, and we try to explain you also want to budget for in case something breaks down or any kind of crisis. Like right now, if you happen to lose your job. But I think that is a big part of it is, you know, they think I don't even have, you know, $1,000 for earnest money. And so I think that is a is, is big thing. Once you get past, if there's credit issues, it's, we don't have money to buy. And most people, after they sit through a budgeting class, they have the money. They're just got to find better ways to not spend it, like at Starbucks or you know, places like that, where they'll easily come up with their down payment money and get help from all these resources to be able to succeed in home ownership. When, when you're talking um, budgeting, because that's the one thing that I know I share with people all the time as a loan officer, I basically look at and see and ask questions, all of the questions that your mother said you were not allowed to ask, such as how much do you make, what's in your bank account, et cetera. And you can't make it up. You got to prove it to me, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so one of the things that I do um, is, is and just and, and for them to be totally aware of, you know, basically what I call the unconscious consumerism. And it's, it's a term called swipers. You know, they're, they're just swiping their debit card. Yes. And, and you know what? I'm not sick, but I'm going to cough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's live radio when you cough. Um, but it, it's really interesting to me because I find that the biggest budget buster and I don't know if this is what you see when you're going over to budgeting with your clients, because even though I've referred a lot of people to you, I haven't actually gone through it myself. Um, but I see the biggest budget buster tends to be food for people. Yes. yes. And and what is the what's the consistent thing that you see? That is the biggest thing I see actually when I teach the classes is there's of course our housing. You know, we got to pay our rent. And then next comes our car payments, and can we get through that? And then the third biggest expense, what we have found, is the eating out. Not only just the we're going to the grocery store and stock up and cook all week, like some of us do meal prep, but it's also the I didn't have time to cook today, so we're running to McDonald's. Or uh, for me specifically, it's the Starbucks run. And all those every day that we stop for some drink or some food, Every time we stop, most of us will stop every day at some point, except for right now, not as much. Um, we, we end up spending, on an average, when I discuss this with people, it's easy $500 a month. Easy. And that wasn't our trip to the grocery store to stock up on the food we have at home. That was just on eating out and entertainment type spending. So I usually can tell or meet with people and explain to them, you will find $500 in the first month. You just have to cut back on maybe not Starbucks coffee and go to Circle K coffee and then start making it at home. But, you know, you will find the, the funds if you stick to a plan. Well, and one of the things that I find that one of the most common reasons that I see for people failing or giving up is that it's and it's kind of like dieting. Well, they'll do this all or nothing thing. So they'll be really good with their quote unquote budget. And I, actually, I jokingly. I'm starting telling my people, I'm not going to even say the word budget to you because budget in the United States means cheap and nobody wants to be cheap. Mm -hmm. So I, I call it a spending plan mm -hmm. <laughs> So I, because everybody likes to spend and we're just going to create a spending plan. And so one of the things, uh, I've got a couple of Karen Fishers. This is not 
this is not from any official class. This is just Karen Fisher having been in the industry for 30 years, rules of thumb. So I'll test it on you and see what your thoughts are. Number one, when I see their bank statements, if their bank statement is greater than three pages long, I will guarantee you that they're swipers. They're swiping their debit cards all the time. That's yeah. number one. Um, number two, if they, uh, if, and, and it's amazing to me, but if they have multiple payments on their bank statements that are what I call unconscious, so I'll, I'll look and I'll see, and, and these are not bad companies. I don't want to distance myself from, you know, we're not trashing the companies. You can do anything you want. You just have to know that you're doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So when I see the Netflix or the gaming shows or the, uh, you know, one thing after another, um, I'll see a lot of iTunes. I'll see a lot of different things, but they're constant. And mm-hmm. people are really aware when they make big purchases, like they'll definitely shop for a car. They'll definitely shop for a house. But what they don't tend to look into is the every day or every week or every month purchases. And so an interesting thing to ask yourself right now, and this is kind of an exercise that we like to do once a year, if not more, but once a year for sure, is is to say, if I had to cut 20% out of my budget right now, what would I do? Where would I cut 20%? And it's really interesting. Even people that I know, I mean, they do not have financial difficulties. And we just made a game out of it. it. You can make it fun. We made a game out of it. And it was amazing that even just double checking the insurance premium for your homeowner's insurance, for your auto insurance, for your health insurance, whatever the case may be. Some things are employer paid. Some things are not going to make any changes. But make sure you've got the appropriate coverage. Right now, there's a lot of people in, I would say, in, within Arizona that are underinsured for their insurance. So there may be a possibility that they could get better coverage at the same or less cost. Um, and then um, one of the things I tell people is to look and do, if they, have a, if they are homeowners, do a mortgage review. I've got clients right now that we're getting rid of mortgage insurance. It's you know, they, they don't know that the mortgage insurance is even on there because they're not aware of it. They just have their mortgage payments on auto pay. So um, I don't know what your thoughts are. What are some hot tips that you have for helping people to budget? Well, similar to what you have, we, we say, you know, print out your bank statements because a lot of people do not even get them sent home anymore. They're paperless. So it's like actually you log on to your bank account, print it out. And that actually, help, that actually helps me at home, too, because that, that way I can show everybody when I say, oh, we went to Dairy Queen last night, as a matter of fact, because, you know, the kids were tired of being stuck at home. So there we go to the Dairy Queen drive through and there we're out $25 for dessert. So mm-hmm. I try to show them, it's like, yes, it's a treat, but that treat was expensive. So if we had to start looking at what are we cutting back? Dairy King would be, it would be dessert. And it's not because we were hungry. We just thought we needed a treat. Um, another big one for us here at home is the cell phone bill. You know, it's like between all of us and the data and even the warranties we have on the cell phones, that is a huge expense for us where people don't really necessarily look into that. Like you say, the Netflix and the cables and the house alarm when those bundles, it's like, okay, well, we have warranties on our laptops on our cell phones so all those little things add up every month so it's like let's sit down and see it's first finding where the money's going and that's going to help us determine where can we start saving so when when you first meet with somebody and you're gonna you're gonna start discovering because i again i i just i see it as unconscious consumerism Um, and one of the things that I think is really interesting, there is a gentleman, he's retired now, but there was a very good financial, uh, planner by the name of Michael Lefton. His nickname was Lefty and Lefty, uh, would literally say to people, and he loved working with high school students or younger, um, he, just to get them to do, and he would literally say to them every day in America, people are being robbed without a gun. 
And when he said that to my daughter, who was nine years old at the time with her friend, her eyes about popped out of her head. Now, we were in the room with her, you know, but in the back. And he talked about, and he says, you know, it, it's fine that this is happening. Please understand that we're not saying that marketing is bad. But there is a reason why the most expensive shelf space in a grocery store is at the end cap. Mm -hmm. And the most expensive space in a convenience store is right in front of the cash register. And he says, and you know why that is. And so they, were, they, they couldn't figure out. She was there with her friends. They were both, like I said, nine years old, their first financial planning meeting. And it, it literally is the mommy, mommy, mommy. Can I have this? And it's right there in that impulse buy. So if you are aware of it, the marketing piece can be very fascinating. Um, but if you're just, you know, if you are, like I said, every day being robbed without a gun, if you're departing with your money, your hard-earned money, without even realizing where it's going, um, that's the part to me that's heartbreaking. And then the other thing on a large-scale basis as I, you know, as people get stabilized in their finances and things like that, the two things that I see destroying people's financial futures, um, it's, well, technically three things, um, but specifically auto loans, credit cards, and student loans. Mm -hmm. And the student loans are, um, are, are very, very devastating to a lot of the families. Um, in fact, on your website, I know you've got some resources, and it definitely addresses that. But the the there's a mindset for some people is that they will always have auto loans. And I am here to tell you, you don't have to always have an auto loan. You can get rid of your auto loan, and if you save and you keep paying yourself, you call it a, a, a savings to spend account, and if you keep paying as if you were paying a car payment for a couple of years after you've paid your car off, then it's very easy to end up just paying cash for a car. Correct. And, and you can still find a reliable vehicle. You know, that's what a lot of people's argument is. Well, I need a newer vehicle that's going to cost me more money because it's reliable. So you can definitely find one that's just as reliable that's just a few years old. Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely. There's... um. And then let somebody else take the depreciation on top of it. Correct. So, yeah, no, that, that's good. Well, I want to talk about one of your favorite pet projects, if that's okay with you. For sure. Okay. So um, we're coming up on the top of the hour, and I just want to remind people that this is Karen Fisher, and I am a senior loan officer with Summit Funding, and we are broadcasting remotely on Tucson Business Radio X. And with me is my wonderful guest is Patty Gonzalez, and she is with, um, oh my gosh, I just was totally, <laughs> I'm trying to say the name of uh, the, the company, and I keep messing it up, it's Community Investment Corporation. I don't want to just say CIC, even though that's what we refer to you guys uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. So Community Investment Corporation, and they, they you're the whole ownership director, but you guys actually do a lot more things than that. And your website and everything is going to be posted on the, uh, it'll be on the broadcast on the show and lots of links and things that are there. So, so let, so let's talk about the mortgage credit certificate program, which a lot of people can take advantage of if they're looking at purchasing. Yes, most definitely. It's actually the MCC, the mortgage credit certificate is my baby. I've actually been administering the program since 1995, it was available statewide. Uh, right now, we're currently statewide, uh, excluding a couple cities in Maricopa County, but the program is still available. And the problem with this program is that the money's always been there. The program's always been there. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just people aren't aware of it. And how it specifically works is what the program will do is give you 40% of the interest you pay as a tax credit. So in a quick example of a hundred of a loan amount of 125,000 at 4% interest rate, they're going to pay $5,000 in just interest alone, which is something that you can write up as a deduction, which is a separate subject. 
this program will give you 40% of that interest you've paid. So 40% of that $5,000 interest you have paid is a $2,000 tax credit, which is good for the life of the mortgage. So on average, on a 30-year mortgage, you're looking at forty dollars to $50,000 of just tax credits, something that most people aren't aware of and just could be using it from here on out. So as teaching people to buy a home, you know, it's like, this is a good thing. You should budget. We're going to work on your credit. Make sure you make your mortgage payments, things like that. We kind of forget about this program that's like, oh, and by the way, this is how you can get, continue to get $2,000 every year once you're in your home in case you need to do home improvements or give extra payments to your principal. So it's one of those little silent programs that's really good. It's just people aren't aware of it because people just hear tax credit and I'm already working on a budget and chasing my credit and work with a lender and a realtor and a title company. So they're thinking tax credit, it's not even tax season. So they kind of just put it off. So it is something that's great. I would just love for more people to take advantage of the program. Well, and we really wanted to bring you on the show as well, just to, to further expand this because the information just needs to get out there. And I think that one of the things that I've talked to people about that, and I've utilized, uh, in fact, um, Summit Funding as a company and me personally, we have been really big proponents of the mortgage credit certificate because if there's a client that's avail- that, that, that somebody would benefit from this program, they've got to fit into some parameters and those parameters change every year, but we've got the list and it's, you know, and it fits for a lot of clients. What I, I, I personally, if I knew that somebody could qualify for a mortgage credit certificate, I would just feel so guilty for not letting them know. And Oh, by the way, you could get, you know, $2,000 a year and people don't understand what a tax credit is. So the best way that I explain it to them, and you probably even have a better way, but the way that I explain it to people is say, look, if you received a refund of, say, $800 on your taxes this year, with the mortgage credit certificate, that tax credit, you would get $2,800 from the federal government. It is not a deduction. So they get really confused about the difference between a credit, a mortgage, you know, the tax credit versus a tax deduction. Because I've had several people, when I've brought it up, they say, oh, well, I don't qualify for the standard deduction. Or I, I don't qualify to itemize is what they say. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and so, that's the, the misconception is, is most people think, oh, I already get a refund. And so I wouldn't benefit. Or as you explain, I don't itemize or I file the standard deduction. It's like this is a whole different subject. And then as we get to talking about it, they're just kind of shut off. You know, so it, it's kind of like, um, maybe I'll look it into it someday. But, the, you know, one thing with this program is you have to apply before you close. So what we try to do is, hey, bring me three years of your tax returns. So that's one of the program requirements anyway. And I'm going to show you specifically on your tax return where that $2,000 is going to plug in. And as soon as they see that, they're like, sign me up. I, I, I love it. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's just capturing the person is the issue because when we try to explain it or try to sell it, it just kind of goes over their heads. And it's not until like, hey, just give me 30 minutes and I'll show you how to save $2,000 every year once you're in your home. And then they start thinking, it kind of sounds like a scam, you know, and it's like, no, I've been doing it for 25 years. It's just, it's not a scam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely getting it out there and, and making sure people understand it. And then what we've gone to do as as far as SCIC, we also started doing free tax preparation because it's what we want you guys to take advantage of this program. And then once you have the program, we're going to offer free tax preparation so that you make sure you're using the benefit. So you might even still go see your tax preparer and they might say, oh, we're not going to put your house on your taxes. And that just means they're not going to deduct your interest. It's like you got to remind them that this is something entirely different. So we even had to jump that hoop by saying, you know what, let, let us get you this program, and we're going to prepare your taxes for free to make sure you do take advantage of this two thousand dollars. Now that's something that I didn't know that you guys did. Now you did you just recently add that? Uh, in the last two years, we did it. Oh, we did it last yeah, year that. and we yeah. did it this year. So okay. we do it through the through the Vita program, and um, they're volunteers, and we get them to come in 
we we do once a month. We, right now, we're only doing once a month. Next year, our goal is going to do once a week because um, they're free tax creation throughout the community. But we were only offering it once a month, specifically at our building. And next year, the hope is we're increasing slowly and slowly. So next year, we're going to do uh, once a week for about three months. So, and everybody's welcome, not just people that have the tax credit program. It's just the volunteer tax preparation program. Well, and I noticed that the income levels, they change every year. Mm -hmm. And so um, I did print up the new information. So there are some household income limits, but there's some exceptions to this. So one of the exceptions is qualified military veterans. Correct. Um, so when you say, what is the definition of a qualified military veteran? So they, they're either serving or um, honorably discharged. They've, they've been in the military. And, and basically what that says, it kind of bypasses the first-time home ownership rules. Um, the same with, that's our biggest thing is first-time home buyer, or you've not owned a home in the last three years. Or if you're a veteran, then you also qualify as a first-time home buyer. Um, there's something also we call target areas. Same is you don't have to be a first-time home buyer income limit and purchase price limits are higher. Um, so just, do you want to go ahead and talk about those income limits? Well, I, I think that would be good because okay. I'm looking at the updated sheet and if you're a family size of up to two people in the non-target area, so let's just call it the, the, uh, the standard program, Correct. if you will, yeah. um, it's 67900 per year mm -hmm. for a family yeah. of up to two people. And then in the target area that, um, so, and that's based upon zip code and I can help. If you're looking at a certain property, I have the guides, I've got the means to be able to help look that up. Yeah. Um, but that targeted area is, is 81,000 for, it's such a funny number, $81,480. Not 481, but 480. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you have a family size of three or more people, the non-target area is 78,000. And eighty five dollars, and then the target area is ninety five thousand and eighty dollars. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. at ninety five sixty. Okay, that's yeah. my old eyes looking at the <laughs> paperwork and everything like that. Um, and then there's some purchase price limits. Okay, as far as uh, newer existing, but I mean they're super reasonable. Those uh, newer existing is two eighty three, and this is in the standard or non target area is two hundred and eighty three thousand three hundred and forty eight. And then the target area is 346, 315. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, to me, that, that, that is, uh, you know, that is why I just feel it's responsible as a loan officer and all loan officers. I mean, this is not, this is not a summit funding program. This is available to everyone, okay? And so as a lender, I just think that when you look at this, even now there's a side benefit if it's necessary. There is a way that as a lender, and that's a separate conversation, but as a lender, we can actually use that tax credit as a form of additional qualifying income if necessary. That's correct. Just to let you know. But um, but that's, that's my role. That's where I come in as far as a loan officer because the qualifying income rules, since they came out with the, um, with the TRID, which is the TILA RESPA, so the Truth and Lending Act, Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, that, mm -hmm. that alphabet jumbo soup, you know, about a third of that deals with what's the definition of qualifying income. So that's where I come in. And I'm, it, um, the, I don't charge for a consultation. I can do everything virtually, which is great within mm -hmm. our environment. We're very blessed. To, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing that's happening to our world, but we're blessed by technology that it has not stopped us. So we can keep, we're just like you're continuing to do things. We are continuing to fund and close loans and originate. And it's a great opportunity for buyers right now, for sure. Um, and, yeah. and, and it also applies um, for all home types. It's not just including, and this is one thing I didn't know. It's, um, and tell me if this is new, because maybe it's not, and I just wasn't aware of it, is duplexes. So owner-occupied duplexes. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it can be um, manufactured homes is always a big question. Duplex is also accepted. Condos, almost every type of home and any type of loan. So it's a great program. It's open to everybody. We work with any lender. And then if you get on our website, you will actually see Summit is 
our top producing in 2019. Huh? So you guys will you guys will be on our well, website for the whole year because you guys did produce the most last year. Oh, that's great to know. I, I that I did not know <laughs> to be honest with you. Is yeah. that I mean I know you know we're big proponents, so mm-hmm. with that that I did not know. Um, so so this is great. So this is something that and and let's say a client isn't thinking 30 years. But let's say they stay in the home for that typical seven to ten. Mm-hmm. Ten years, that's twenty thousand dollars. Correct. That's your car that you're not gonna have a car payment on as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so right. um so well let's let's talk about some other fun things that um that community investment corporation does. You guys have additional down payment assistance programs and you partner with two sister agencies, both family housing resources which is where we first met many uh-huh. years ago. I was trying to, I mean, it's, Patty, it's close to 20 years. Easily, easily. I know. It's like, <laughs> okay, I date myself. Yeah. Um, and, and then also in a really amazing organization called the Southern Arizona Land Trust. Yes. Yeah. So what so, our, our sister agencies do is uh, at Family Housing Resources, they're also a local, a local nonprofit HUD approved agency, and they process down payment assistance to low to moderate income home buyers. So they are uh, right now doing two programs that are helping with down payment assistance. So we can talk a little bit about those programs. Um, there's one program that's called HOME, H-O-M-E, and that particular program offers up to 10% in assistance. And it's 10% of the purchase price. So if you're you know, qualifying or shopping for a $150,000 home, there's $15,000 towards your down payment and closing costs. So that's easily, you know, when people say they don't have money, if you qualify for these 10%, it's a lot of money that's going to pretty much pay for all your expenses. Absolutely. Um, And they also are the ones, some of these programs require you to take a class. So Family Housing Resources does offer the class, and those are the ones that I, I teach for them. Um, it's a eight hour home buyer workshop, which some of the down payment programs require. And then I'll talk about a different one that requires an online class. Um, but the home program is up to 10%. And if you get on their website, it's also on our website. There's income limits based off your family size. Um, and then there's the wish program, which is a really good deal when we talk about budgeting. And this is why it's important to have some savings is because what the WISH program will do, it matches money you can put into the deal. And it matches four times what you can contribute. So if you're able to come up with 5500 the program's going to give you $22,000. So you take that 22000 and you add your 5500 mm-hmm. to it, then, you know, that I mean, that is a very significant down payment. And we've been able... We were able to help several families last year with the uh, with the Wish program. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's that to me. I, I actually of all. I mean, they they all all the down payment assistance programs definitely they all have their place. My personal passion is is the Wish program because of the fact that it is rewarding people for saving. And then they ask. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just I just think it's so important that it rewards people for saving. I think right. it's huge, and and that's when it's important because it's like that five hundred dollars a month at you know Starbucks and Dairy Queen and all of that right there alone times four is two thousand dollars. You know, it's like something something minor that it's like we're going to find a way. This is kind of giving you incentive to find that way. And then what they're tra- the goal for twenty twenty with the the fellow nonprofits is. They're hoping if you meet the wish guidelines, then you meet the home guidelines. So if you're qualifying for the 10% plus the 22000 if you've saved your money, you've come in with at least 20% towards your home, and you're getting rid of mortgage insurance, which we talked a little bit about earlier, which is a big chunk to get into, the premium plus your monthly. So, yes, and, and then for our listeners that aren't aware of what mortgage insurance is, there are two types of insurances that go with every transaction. One, you need to have insurance on your home to protect it in case it burns to the ground. Okay, that's, that's homeowner's insurance, also known as property and casualty or personal lines. That's, that's homeowner's insurance. That you'll always have on your property, even if it was, even if it was free and clear. 
Um, but then mortgage insurance is a different animal. Mortgage insurance is required if you are putting less than 20% down on the purchase transaction. But one of the things that we've been able to do, we have a, an exclusive program called the Summit Single, and that Summit Single allows us to buy out the mortgage insurance. And so I've helped some clients, um, even though they didn't need down payment assistance, and even though they actually had the 20% down to down, they were nervous about depleting their savings, and I was able to show them how they could very inexpensively buy out the mortgage insurance, one and done, and they, um, it, it, and you know, as far as how they could keep their money in their investments and to do some other things, that was a really great. That's that's a really great tool for people. Yeah, and then if you get this tax credit, you're now coming up with an extra two thousand dollars every year once you're in your home. So yeah. we're definitely trying to layer all the programs this year to see what fits best for the home buyer. Um, so where we kick in w with those particular programs, those are through the city of Tucson and Pima County and um, Federal Home Loan Bank is the, the WISH program. We actually wire the funds on behalf of the nonprofit. So we're there at closing and getting ready to send that money to make sure, you know, the home buyer is able to close on time and get their funding for their program. So we're considered the fiscal agent. And then there's the other program that we administer at CIC is the Pima Tucson Home Buyer Solutions Program, which is also another source of down payment funds that is available working through your lender and getting that process. So that one has the online class and you stay and do everything through the mortgage company. You don't actually get to get to the nonprofit. Yes, but, you know, I still recommend, and for my clients, especially those who either haven't purchased a home, well, have never purchased a home or haven't purchased a home recently, I, I actually have a link and provide an online class. I actually encourage people to take more than one class. Oh, yeah. It does not hurt for the consumer. The more educated our consumers are, I find the better, you know, because then if that's what to me, helps to create responsible home ownership. And uh, the, we participate, we as a company, Summit Funding, we do participate in the Pima Tucson Home Buyer Solutions. Mm -hmm. and, that, uh, and that actually goes with all loans as well, FHA, VA, USDA, and conventional. There's some uh, details about that. It's the forgivable second loan. Um, so you've got to make sure that you're going to plan on staying in the home for at least three years. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's a lot of things that are there. And, you know, this is a great time. Uh, a lot of the programs allow for gift funds. So if parents are thinking that they want to help their kids um, maybe purchase their first home, uh, gift funds are an acceptable form of down payment. There's some very specific rules that have to be followed. Um, and certain programs, you know, they, they have to have some money of their own, which is just what is responsible. But I've had some uh, parents that they were they were willing to co-sign for their children. And when we sat and we looked at the documents and what was there, um, they didn't need to co-sign. The, the, their kids were able to purchase the home on their own with just a gift from mom or dad. And so that didn't tie up mom and dad's credit or put them on the hook for anything. And they weren't able to get into a home of their own, yeah. which is pretty exciting. It is. No, and you definitely don't want to get tied up because that, that goes back into our first time home buyer issue where I've had children on the loan with their parents and they have ownership interests. So now you're not considered a first time home buyer. Yes. You know, yeah, so there's but, all these little things that, you know, we learn along the way, but there's, you know, it's, it's definitely education is a big, big key. Well, um, I want to share some kind of fun statistics um, about what, um, what CIC has done. And this is huge. So, again, Community Investment Corporation, nicknamed in the community all throughout as CIC. But um, this, is, this is just, it, I love seeing these statistics. So, so far, you have provided down payment assistance to 1,798 homeowners. Yes, and, and I think it's gone up. <laughs> oh, and that, and, and this is just for the website, so it's yeah, probably it's changed since then. Yeah, and and dollar amount. Think about this. 
That is over $11 million in down payments made. That's huge. And and then some other things that you do just in terms of, you know, as far as the community. I mean, so tell me a little bit about the history of CAC because you do the home ownership piece of it, but you also do social impact financing. You also Correct. do school impact, um, you know, and I know these are not the programs that you work with, but they're certainly your coworkers. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, like what was the brainchild for CIC? Well, it started with, uh, charter funding, so like charter bond compliance, and then it also then took into becoming fiscal agents to funding the down payment assistance so that there wasn't any conflict of interest with the nonprofit that qualifying people also sending the money. So it kind of were the fiscal agents of let's lend money or how do we get the money out into the community. So they started with putting out this down payment assistance and then they get reimbursed from the city or the county or wherever the funding comes from. And then with the school impact, we work with local schools or state schools with bond compliance. We even do lending to schools if they want to like bridge a loan that they currently have, anything that they need to make the school successful. We currently have a program through, it's called Family Engagement. And what that program is, is we're working with schools and parents to make sure they understand what resources are available to them. And the benefit of all these programs is all our services are essentially free. You know, you're not paying for these type of services that Community Investment Corporation is offering. And right now, the big one is our so with our impact, our social impact financing. We just kicked off um, emergency micro loans. So right now we're doing um, um, loan products or small business loans to these businesses that are forced to close down, or if we also currently have loans with them, we're deferring their payments for a couple months, you know, because we want to keep, the, we want to help see these businesses succeed. So we also want to, we know things are happening right now and businesses slow down. So we're going to hold off collecting from you for a couple months while you get reestablished. So our social impact financing is something that's pretty big. It does, we're working in partnership with the Community Food Bank and Startup Tucson. Um, we do standard types of loans. There's a program where if you got yourself into a car title loan, we have a program called ABLE, which will help you get you out of that car title loan. And we will get your title back, and then you will make the payments to us at a reasonable interest rate, not, you know, 35%. So, um so they, well, there's com a lot. compounded, it ends up being more than that. It's, right, um, yeah. Um, the payday loans. It's, it's, yes. And, and uh, a lot of people, I see that on their on their bank statements, and um, they, they're like, well, it was just an emergency loan for one time, but then I find that mm -hmm. they keep having to renew them over and over and over again. Yeah, because they never get out from under the interest. So most of our loans, you know, I don't, I don't think they exceed 8 to 10%. You know, they're reasonable loans. They're not something where we're, we're trying to save people from those types of um, loans. And then we're also trying to get these businesses started and micro loans and, and charter school loans, you know, help people in business. Well, and, and you're hope, um, helping local businesses. Not, not, uh, you're doing some things. Startup Tucson has a lot of resources. But let's say you're an existing business. And, and at this point in time, you've been hit by the, uh, by the pandemic. Um, is that something that our listeners could reach out and just find out if they're um, eligible for for house yep. loans? Most definitely, yeah. They're 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 calling them emergency micro loans. So um, to smart to support small businesses, um, and there's Tucson helping Tucson. So we're definitely involved in a lot of programs. We're also doing fundraising that actually goes back to the community. So that's something if they go onto our website or even our Facebook has a lot of information on these programs um, that we're working on. So in, in order to help us help you, um, I know that just by having you on the show and being able to broadcast this, this is definitely a benefit to just let, to spread the word basically. Mm -hmm. um, it, you're also, you are a 5013C. And if somebody felt so inclined, they can certainly make a donation to you, correct? Correct. Yeah. And and I know that you've been, uh, you know, the whole organization has been extremely fiscally responsible, helping consumers, businesses, et cetera, 
to also be fiscally responsible. And this is how we do make um, our entire community better. I mean, Tucson is such a giving community. Um, it, you know, I mean, the people here in Tucson would literally give the shirts off their back. That's just how they are. And now I just I want to be part of helping. And, and that's why I do this radio show is healthy, wealthy, and wise. I see everything. And I just, to me, everything is interconnected. And if we can help somebody, you don't know if that family that we just helped, what impact that has on the legacy for their family, for their children, for their community, for their schools. I mean, there, it's, it's um, you know, one of my most gratifying transactions that I've ever had in my entire career. Um, and there's been a lot of them. But one of the most gratifying transactions I ever had, and this dates back like 15 plus years ago, and I know that um, you were a part of it, uh, but you may not remember it, but I had a client who, um, they were uh, um, fifth generation at, as far as uh, living on the reservation mm-hmm. and was the first one to, you know, to leave and get a great education. And her husband was also the five or six generations of no home ownership. They were the first ones to have home ownership. Mm-hmm. And then, so here it is all these years later, and they had young children. Well, they weren't that young because this is the part that's so exciting. Their children have just bought their first home. Each one of their kids now. Oh, yes. And I'll always remember you. And that's a good thing about that referral. You know, you helped my mom and dad do something wonderful. All those years ago. (laughs) So, yeah. And um, that's another thing. But there's those programs that are available. If there's anyone, um, there's a lot of resources out of SALS, out of all the different nations, all the different programs. They also have down payment assistance if you are native. Yes. And they they can be matched. You know, some of that information that can absolutely be matched as well. So there's some things that are there. So um, my my goal for this show always is to be informative, but also to be entertaining. And we did a lot of content today, but now we get to do some fun stuff. So um, um, so one of the things that we've been seeing some people with uh, social with the social distancing, we still have the increase in social media things that are there. And so one of the funniest things that I've seen is uh, there's all kinds of funny ones, but one in particular. And so I'll just ask you a couple of fun questions. Brussels sprouts, yes or no? Yes. My okay. particular one son loves them. Oh, very yes. good. Then with or without bacon? No bacon, no pork nope. in this house. No pork <laughs> in the house. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and then um, in terms of as far as the animals in your house, cats? Or dogs or both? One dog. One dog. Okay. <laughs> once this is, once we're out of the pandemic, what is one of the things that you are going to continue to do that you've been forced to do right now? I, I miss shopping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to go to Bed Bath & Beyond or, yeah, I just want to go to a store. Okay, <laughs> and, and I feel very okay. And then, what are what's one of the things that you're going to stop doing once this is all lifted? It's actually helped with cutting back on my Starbucks expense since I haven't left the house. Uh huh. Forcing me to make coffee at home, so hopefully I don't go back to that big expense that I take on quite often at Starbucks. So, are are you sometimes like the uh, cobbler's son who has no shoes? But <laughs> you know. Sometimes we all do that, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I guess that's one thing I hope I can kick. And I mean, of course, we're, I've been snacking all day, so that's that's kind of a downfall. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and and that is, um, you know, that is something that that is is interesting as as far as people are like. There's some other people saying, okay, they're just gonna be, so, you know, they've got some pictures of. Before the lockdown, the, or the, <laughs> the, the social distancing, and afterwards, and um, one of the things, what so in terms of one of the tips that you have for people that are like they're they're just wanting to explore, 
One is uh, one question I do have, and that actually this is just going back to some of our conversation. Some people think that once they take the class with you, that there is an expiration date. Is there an expiration date? And if so, how long is it? The class certificate itself is good for a year. So, so I'm that's not sure. huge. Yeah, I'm not sure about the online courses, but the in-person ones, they are good for a year. Um, a, lot, a lot of things, a lot of people also, because they took class, they think they're in the program. The class is just kind of education to so understand the entire buying process. Then you have to do your, your homework. Now you got to meet with this nonprofit to get this down payment assistance. You got to meet with me to qualify for the tax credit program, continue working with you as a lender and your realtor. And so I explain in class, there's, you know, 20 bodies involved in the entire process. So make sure you understand who you're working with, what their role is, and what you have to do next. Well, and the interesting thing is 20 people that they see. But mm -hmm. I actually, as I, you know, I'm a numbers person, and I totally geeked out. And I actually counted how many people petrophile. Mm -hmm. Do you want, you want to know what that number is? I do. Bare bones, 75 people. Yeah. And people are like, how is that possible? I'm like, look, you got the Pima County Treasurer's Office, Pima County Assessor's Office, the flood certification people, title officer, escrow officer. I mean, all of a sudden people yeah. are like, wow. Yeah. And and I said, oh, and those that I just rattled off, you haven't even gotten a loan yet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that's why it's so overwhelming, you know, and that's why we're hoping, you know, if you're educated and, and you get some information about all these people, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it now. Well, and I, yeah, and I get it now. And this is the thing that I encourage people to do is to, uh, two big things. Number one, keep a notebook. Just like when you go to the doctor, you want to write everything down so you can ask all your questions. And even if you've asked me or anybody, anybody like you, you've asked the question before, if you don't understand it, ask it again. It's okay. Just ask it again. Um, and so um, that part is great. So, well, Patty, you are a joy. You give so much to our community. I am truly honored that you were able to be my guest. Thank you for your flexibility of, of doing it. Oh, I, well, let me ask you one last question because uh -huh. we're at the end of the hour. The one last question I just was gonna, that just popped into my mind was, how are you doing the classes for homebuyer education? Are you doing them virtually, the eight-hour classes now? We are going to start. I just did the March classes. We did still do them in person, and we are going to start doing virtual or even we're going to hopefully we're going to try to record it and have it on the website with Family Housing Resources. They're still looking into how they want to do that. Well, if that may be an area because I've got some connections to the city of Tucson and a contact person that maybe that's how I can help you guys that can help you get that set up. That might be a great thing. Yeah, is there, yeah, so that is great. Well, um, I'm hoping this is the fastest hour that you've had all week. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> We're all set. I always like to let people know that um, that our guests on my show, it is amazing how quickly it can go by. And I just want to thank you once again. And um, just please just uh, the best way for them to contact you is it to call the phone number and it will get routed to you? Right now it is getting routed to us. Email is still the best way to communicate with us. We're doing everything uh, online. You can email us documents, upload them to our website. So uh, we still can get the process done pretty quickly, you know, within a week or so. That way we don't stop the closing or anything like that. But um, email is the best way, or even if they go to our website. Um, but my cell phone is also available. You, you'll you get directed to my cell phone regardless. Okay. So the phone number that they should call first is the 520-462-4622? Correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Perfect. So we'll have that. We'll have the other information on the website. And last but not least, as we're finished up right now, I am Karen Fisher with Summit Funding. The best way to reach me is to call my direct line at the office, which is 447-2279, of course, area code 520-447-2279. Have a rest of the week. Just make it amazing, and everyone stay safe and stay away. <laughs> okay. And thank you for having me. I appreciate this. Thank you so much. 